Я думаю, эти вот эти молодые были, которые. Они заныкали все. Закрыли. Ой, бля. Такая куча костей, ебатошимся. Сука, я туда не попал. Видно, не видно, я не знаю. Are you ready to explore the mysterious depths beneath the City of Lights? Brace yourself as we take you into the dark and bone-chilling world of the Paris catacombs. Did you know, beneath the busy streets of Paris lies an underground network of tunnels stretching over 300 kilometers, and it's all about to get terrifyingly real. Did you know, the catacombs hold the remains of approximately 6 million people, transferred there from various cemeteries during the late 18th century. This macabre labyrinth is an eerie cemetery like no other. Did you know, deep within these winding tunnels, you'll encounter bones stacked neatly, forming massive walls of skeletal remains. Prepare to face the haunting presence of centuries worth of souls. Did you know, legend has it that the catacombs are haunted by restless spirits. Brave explorers have reported hearing ghostly whispers echoing through the corridors, making your heart race at every turn. Did you know, venturing deeper into the catacombs, you may stumble upon hidden rooms that were once used by secret societies for their mysterious rituals. The darkness and secrecy surrounding these chambers will send shivers down your spine. Did you know, one section of the catacombs, known as, the gates of hell, bears a warning above its entrance that says, stop, this is the empire of death. Just the thought of crossing that threshold is enough to send a chill down your spine. Throughout history, countless people have ventured into the catacombs, never to be seen again. Their mysterious disappearances have left a haunting legacy of fear, ensuring that the catacombs remain one of the world's most chilling urban legends. Are you ready to journey into the heart of darkness? But be warned, once you step foot inside, you may never truly escape TH shadows. This video was posted anonymously on the dark web. It shows a group of men visiting the catacombs of Paris. When they descend to the very bottom, they discover appalling things. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, here's the ledge! Breathing. Holy crap! <laughs> Simultaneously, it's the most, most terrifying thing and coolest thing I've ever done. What? It's very bizarre. These arrows point in a direction. Occasionally, also, he stops to photograph roomfuls of bones which means that he's very, very deep inside the catacombs. So basically, he's filming what he's seeing very deep inside the catacombs, other than the point of view shots, or pictures of human bones. The catacombs for centuries. So it is possible with these paintings uh, that we may be able to retrace the itinerary to some extent. After about four we hear his breathing get louder and louder, uh, as though something was scaring him. He was, he's, he's frightened, he's frightened. Occasionally he stops, perhaps, to try to decide which way to run among all the many different corridors. He's running faster and faster and faster, deeper and deeper into the catacombs. And 
and all of a sudden, we hear his breathing get louder and louder, uh, as though something was scaring him. He was, he's, he's frightened, he's frightened. Occasionally he stops, perhaps, to try to decide which way to run among all the many different corridors. He's running faster and faster and faster, deeper and deeper into the catacombs. And all of a sudden, this video can While exploring the Paris catacombs, I found something very disturbing. Why are there six million bodies beneath the city of Paris? It's because in the 18th century, the graveyards in France were overflowing with bodies, and King Louis XVI needed a plan to organize this. So he arranged the construction of the catacombs. This is a whole second city underneath Paris. It's believed that the catacombs are over 350 kilometers long and are a complex maze of tunnels and corridors. You could imagine that getting lost in here would mean death, and it does. A hotel door doorkeeper named Philibert Aspar stumbled into the catacombs and explored them a little bit. But when his single candle went out, he was surrounded by nothing but darkness and bones. His body was found 11 years later, and he was only identified because of the keys that he carried during his lifetime. There's also this video of a man exploring the catacombs when he suddenly drops his camera and starts sprinting away, which means either he got lost or he wasn't alone down there. Regardless, he was never seen again, and nobody knows what happened to him. And now you know. Let's talk about the secret organizations that hang out in the catacombs. Paris catacombs have been going viral all over TikTok. There have been videos of people getting married in the catacombs and also videos on why we should not be going in them. But today I'm gonna make a video talking about the cataphiles. Now the cataphiles are urban explorers who illegally tour the mines of Paris. Now in the mines of the catacombs, there are secret swimming pools that have crystal clear blue water. However, you do have to hike through this. So we'll talk about that in another video because this video, we're gonna be talking about the group responsible for the movie theater that the police found back in 2004 that left behind a note for the police saying, do not try to find us. Now the group responsible for this is part of the French artist collective called UX, which is a group of urban explorers. There are a bunch of different groups, but this group's particular name who took credit for it, their name was the Mexican Consulated Drilling Authority. When asked about the name, we were told it was like a nonsense name, like it was just something that people put together. But these groups are high tech. Like there is another one that is an all women's group called the Mouse House, who are experts at infiltration. Based off what I read, these people kind of put themselves above the group of cataphiles, like, mm, like, ugh, cataphiles, like we're more elite. I don't know, that's just how it feels from what I've been reading. Now, these groups are not just full of artists. It's important to know because you're like, how the heck did you get a movie theater down there? These groups are made up of engineers, civil servants, lawyers, even state prosecutors. Then they are divided into groups based off their interests. Now, the UX has been around for a really long time and they say that they only have two principles that they follow by. One, they never ask for permission and they also never ask for subsidies from the government. So obviously they never asked to have this movie theater down in the catacombs. So if they wanted to make this movie theater and put on film festival or a theater production underground, wouldn't ask per permission. Instead, they would get the resources needed. They have engineer on staff. They have anyone they need in order to hook up the electricity, which is what really like blew everyone's mind. And apparently there was even a toilet down there. Just so you can visualize it. I mean, they had a giant cinema screen, seats, projection equipment, film reels, a fully stocked bar, and a complete restaurant with chairs and tables. At least allegedly, obviously I've not been down there. <laughs> then when police came back three days later, everything was gone but that note. Now I did see some people stating that there were cameras down there, so they must have seen the police go down there and then they went and cleared out. This is also crazy to me because a lot of the ways that they get into the catacombs is through manholes. Think of how small those are. So obviously they must have have another way to get down there or they just send down the materials and build it while they're there. Yeah, the guy says they get their hands dirty learning how to do things like wire space, introduce internet, electricity in order to stage primarily artistic events. These people are just hosting events down here. And these people are not destroying property. A lot of times they're actually fixing things such as broke into the Pantheon. Probably said the wrong, I'm sorry. But it's one of the Parisian monuments and fixed one of their 19th century clock that they noticed wasn't working. You guys can pause and read this article. It literally says, for a year, even knows of their security, these 
illegal restorer set up shop and fixed this clock. They didn't get in trouble because there were no laws in Paris about trespassing and actually like fixing things. If you're doing bad, yeah, you could go to jail, but if you're actually helping them out, you wouldn't go to jail. I know a lot of talks have been about people breaking in and kind of having these weddings and doing crazy things down there. There's actually a group of artists who go down there, host events, and actually restore different parts of Paris. Next video, I'm gonna talk about the different swimming pools in the catacombs, how people get there. Okay, I have a crazy story and an iPhone trip. You ever heard of the catacombs? Oh yeah, where there's all the bones and stuff? We spent the night under there. I'm Indiana Jerome. Did you see the dead bodies? Oh, or no? there's six million dead bodies on there. We did an illegal tour. It's illegal because like it's so easy to get the lost on there. It's 200 miles. Like a dude in like the 40s, he went down there. His light broke. He couldn't find his way back. Some people came a couple weeks later and they found his body and he was only like 10 meters away from where no he way. needed to get out. How far is 10 meters? Uh, what's that like? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like 80 feet. The lady that does the official tour, she was saying how like the official part is the haunted part. If you turn your lights off, I can put my hands right here. Your eyes don't adjust, there's no light. That's not okay. <laughs> oh, get your apparel at theartofdavid.co. Have you ever wondered why the Paris catacombs uses bones for decoration? It wasn't always the case. The catacombs were first rock quarries underneath the city. The cemeteries in Paris became so full that basement walls underneath them began collapsing, so the quarries were turned into tombs. For two years, the bodies in Paris cemeteries were dug up and placed in the catacombs at night. However, the French general Napoleon desired to have a lasting legacy, so he commissioned the bizarre decorations and ominous signs to draw in tourists to the gravesite of the over 6 million dead. I mean, you guys are all familiar with the Paris catacombs, right? Like the history behind it and stuff like that. The, the cemetery. cemetery. For the cemeteries were being overflowed with fucking bodies, and then they didn't know where to put them, so they decided to to make the catacombs, which is another fucking city under Paris, and it like runs for fucking miles, bro. What I wanted to get at was, uh, there was some explorers who went down there, I think in the early 2000s, like deep ass part of the fucking catacombs that has not been explored yet. But they found a camera. They took it to the authorities. The authorities took a look at it, and then what they saw on the camera was a guy. He's exploring the the catacombs. Like he looks like he knows what he's doing and then eventually he just starts following these arrows on the walls and on the on the floor and then out of nowhere he just starts getting frantic and he he starts running and, and then he, he drops, drops the camera. camera after about 40 minutes of these point of view shots and these pictures of bones we hear his breathing get louder and louder and all of a sudden he drops the camera he just dropped the camera just drops on the ground and keeps rolling <laughs> He keeps rolling until it runs out of tape. Was he alone? Did he see something or was he just like afraid that he couldn't find his way back? I think that's scary because if the guy was really trying to find a way out, you'd start to panic, bro, because mm -hmm. you don't even know if you're going deeper or you're getting out. No matter if you're going one way, just one second, it takes to really get distracted and be like, wait, which way was that coming from again? People are saying that maybe the video was a hoax, maybe it was actually real. Like that's a whole like argument. Somebody just have. put that camera down there too. Yeah. Cause like, uh, The Paris catacombs are a set of tunnels which are underground in France and they contain around the remains of six million people. Uh, essentially what it is is an underground tunnel system full of bones. And in the early 1990s a man filmed himself exploring these catacombs on what's believed to be a cassette tape, like you know the things that have film in them. And along his path he's showing off many things that he's discovered which includes lots of skulls, bones and things of that nature and as the man is continuing through the tunnels you can tell that he's starting to get a little bit frantic it's unclear whether he's lost his way whether he's scared whether he's lost but as the video continues the man begins to walk faster with his breathing increasing and then he begins running it's seen on the footage that he is running through many different tunnels it's clear that he seems to be lost and he's panicking until he drops the camera and runs off into the distance the camera flash was also the only source of light that he had. 
the video continued running for i'm not sure an amount of time because only a section of it has been uploaded to youtube but the camera continued running until it ran out of cassette tape the strange thing about this footage when it was recovered it was found to have been in the deepest part of the catacomb and obviously someone stumbled across this and reviewed the footage and was freaked out the man in the video has not been identified nor is it known whether he made it out of the catacombs it's unclear how the man got into that part of the catacombs because the deep areas that are just a load of tunnels are sort of cut off from the public but to this day it's unclear what happened to the man and whether he survived <laughs> Facebook, and now you're going to...